guys, it's Debbie. Today I am working on a new design team project for TaylorMade Cards for You. Um, this is using the Transcontinental Railway, I think that's the name of the kit. I will leave a link to the kit down below as well as to the other products that I'm using today for my video. So if you want to kind of reproduce it, you are more than welcome. Um, these are the pages that I have so far printed out. Um, let me first though show you what the kit looks like on her website. So this is the Transcontinental Railroad on TaylorMade Cards for You's website. And you can find it down in the link below or just do a search up in the search bar on her website. So this is what it looks like. There's a lot of bits and pieces on here. She has some additional photos to give you some ideas. She has done her passport cards using this and she is an, a master at doing those. But this is the one that I'm gonna be using today. So I picked several of her images out. Some of these I cropped down into smaller ones so that I could arrange them to just basically print out what I wanted. Um, this page here is actually one of the full eight and a half by 11 that I resized down to work as a background for my cards. And I have cropped some other things down that I plan on using on the front of these. So I've gone ahead and printed these out using my Canon printer. So that's what you see here. I've got couple of her background ones that are perfect size for A2 cards. She's got some panels that are A2 card size and some that are journal size. And I really like this image. This is really pretty. Um, this is the one that I resized down to be able to use as a layer on the cards. And then I also printed out some of the um, basically some of the little trains that it looked like little stamps. So I think that those are pretty cool. And the ones that are the film strips. So next what I'm going to do is I'm going to start cutting these down so that I can kind of layer them on my card. I'm just using Nina Solar White um, cardstock to print all of these. And I think that that worked out pretty well. It doesn't go quite as vibrant as I would like, but I think that's going to work out pretty good. And I already had the Nina in my stash, right? So I'm just going to trim it basically right on the edge of the images. So now I've got some little ephemera pieces that I'll be able to use on my cards. So next I need a card base. I've got a bunch of my bits already cut out. Um, I think I have an idea of what I want to do, uh, but I'm going to do a different type of card this time because I'm, I watched some things over at the Card Maker Success Summit and Erin Reed did a a kind of a gatefold kind of card, um, but I'm doing a little bit of a version on it. I'm, kind, I'm actually scoring it a little bit differently because I don't have any 12 by 12 card stock. So I am going to be scoring mine at one and a half and at five and three quarters, and I've already done that. And it comes up to be a perfect gatefold, but it's a little bit offset. So we've only got a half, on, an inch and a half on one side. And I think I, I like this idea. And now I'm going to start layering up some of my images. I told you I love this lady that's peeking out of the, um, the window of the train. I think that looks really cool, but the page, it's a bit too big, right? So that means I need to trim this piece down. And since the panel I want to put it on is at two and three quarters, I need to cut this part down at two and three quarters. So I'll go ahead and do that. Actually about, I think I'm going to do two and a half. So I'll have a little line around the edge. So that would go about right there. And that also means I need to trim off a little bit from the top. That's going to be about a half an inch. And way I find out I'm really not good at planning out my mats. So I basically lay it down and see, okay, how much space do I need? Right here, I can tell that that is a half an inch. That means I need to cut another half inch off. I think I want her to go a little bit further down on the panel. So I'll do it down at the bottom. See, this one is five and a half. So I need to cut it down to about five and a quarter but i'm also wanting to use some of this because i think this is really pretty and i think that would go oh that would go great as a background so i think i'm going to actually trim her out completely so that means this piece needs to be small enough to fit on that panel so that's going to be five and a half by again about three and a half, I mean two and a half. 
And I think this time I want a, more of the blues. So that's going to be two and a half there. I think I am going to do it a little bit bigger just to be on the safe side because I can always trim it down smaller. Also need to do something with this other side. So I think what I'm going to do is trim this other half down just a little bit so that it will fit on there as well. Okay. So I've got this panel pretty much where I want it. I've got to need to trim a little bit off of the outside edge on this one. And that's going to be about a sixteenth of an inch. Actually, it probably needs to be about an eighth. So I'm going to cut it down to one and a half. And it looks like I still need to cut a little bit more. Okay, so that I think is going to be about right. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab out my art glitter glue and start adhering things down onto my main panel. So now it looks like I've basically got an A2 panel on the front. Can't really tell that there's anything different on there until you open it up. Okay, I like that. For the inside, since we are doing the whole vintagey thing, I think what I'm going to do, and this one has a little bit of interest there, or do I want to go with the train? I think I'm going to go with the train. Okay, so I'm going to trim a little bit off of the top and off of one of the sides. And leaving that train pretty much intact. Okay, so that is going to go good there. Now, since Monica went through all the trouble of distressing it up, I think I need to add a little bit of ink on the sides too. Before I do that, I think I want to put the same... That same stained paper on both of the flaps. That I think would look pretty cool. Okay, so just making sure I've got all of the pieces for the inside that I want. So this one still needs to be trimmed down a little bit. So like I said, Monica did go through the trouble of distressing all of these pages out and making them so vintagey. I'm gonna bring out some of my Tim Holtz distress inks and I want to go with vintage photo. So I'm going to distress the edges just a little bit. Not a lot. I don't want a lot of ink on the inside of the card, but even if there is a little bit of transfer between one side and another, while it dries, it's perfectly fine because you know what? They're all the same color, right? And I'm just using a silicone mat on my desk to keep things from moving around. So that one looks pretty good. I mean, yes, my side kind of looks more uniform than hers, but you know what? It, it is what it is. I think, well, let's, let's take care of that. Okay, so I just added a little bit where it would have uh, folded, kind of doing uh, my own little bit of a fold. I don't really want to crumple up too much of it, but just totally can. Okay, so that one is going to be done. Now I need to add some ink to these. Okay, so now I have got the inside done and the outside is pretty much started. So let me go ahead and adhere this down. This is kind of a flat card. I don't really do a lot of flat cards. Well, kind of sort of flat card. I think the fact that it pops up like that makes it so it's not quite so flat. Um, but I do think that that's probably a little bit almost too busy. Do I want to add anything else to the front of this thing? No, I am going to add this just flat down. Let's 
center it kind of in that area. I like the way that that is going to look. That is so pretty. And I do want this one to come across. Now, part of the reason I want to do that is I want it to be a little bit of a flap there. So that also means I need to put something on the back, which I think I have another one of these, don't I? I do, I do, I do. So I can, if I want, put another one on the inside. I think that's what I'm going to do. So again, I'm going to trim that one down. So I was able to use my paper trimmer for a couple of those, but now I need to take my scissors so that I don't, I want it to be exactly matching. Don't want to have any overlay. Now a way to get around that would probably be to back these and have it where it's got a, um, basically got a mat. Now it looks like one of these might be a little bit off. Just taking my scissors and trimming off the excess. And then do the same thing on this side. And it should match up pretty much exactly. So I'm just adding some adhesive to that edge there. And putting it in place. And then putting adhesive there and then i will put some more adhesive on this edge because it's going to go here i need some more adhesive on this edge so it's going to be on the inside of the card and attached and then i can line that up okay so that looks like it's pretty close Okay, and then I can decorate a little bit on the inside, I think. But before I do that, one thing I've decided that I want to do, there is a little bit of white right there at the edge. And I think what I'm going to do is add a little bit of the vintage photo along the edge. So you don't really see that white. And since this closes exact in the middle, you can add as much decoration on the inside as you want. So I am trimming this right at the edge of the, the stamp preparation. <laughs> and now I need to decide where do I want to put this? So I'm kind of thinking across the train, but I don't want it across the train. And also cut them apart and make them into three different little stamp sticker pieces, right? And I think I'm going to go with two of these train images. Yes, that is going to work out well. And I'm just adhering this one down with some liquid glue as well. Now, the heavier the cardstock that you use, the more bulky your card's going to be. So always take that into consideration when you're cutting everything out. I mean, if you're putting them all on the front, front of the card then it's not as big of a deal but if you're putting anything on the inside you need to make sure that your cardstock isn't too thick okay so I think that that's got enough going on. <laughs> so that's going to finish up my design team project for today for uh, Miss Monica. This is completely different than what I normally do, but I think I was channeling my inner Monica. Um, you guys have a wonderful day. Be sure to check out the other projects in today's hop, and I will see you soon. Remember, if I can make it, you can too. Talk to you later. Bye, guys.